Uh, hello, so this is an introduction to conditionality for Debian Nebraska. So to start off with discussing um, conditionality, we have to first cover what is status. And this is something that you'll often hear in debates during cross-examination after the one in C people will usually ask something like, uh, what's the status of the counter plan? What's the status of the critique, etc.? So what is uh, the status? So the status of an advocacy defines the extent by which the negative gets to kick out of or remove these advocacies from the debate. So what is an advocacy? Well, these will usually include um, solvency advocacies like counter plans, critiques, essentially um, some position that creates a separate world um, such as a counter plan or a critique. And there are three known statuses uh, deployed in debate. Uh, the first one is conditional, so the counter plan is conditional, or the K is condition conditional. So it's also known as condo. It's where the negative is able to kick out of advocacies. Uh, then the second one is unconditional or uncondo. The negative is unable to kick out of um, an advocacy. And the weirdest one is dispositional, which is also known as dispo, where the negative is able to kick advocacies given a certain condition is met. So, for instance, uh, we get to kick the counter plan if you uh, permit or something. So, what is condo? So, condo is conditionality, and uh, it's the argument that the negative may not read conditional advocacies as typically read in the 1ER as a theory show or procedural, or the 2AC if you do policy. So why should you read condo? It's a very good generic theory argument to uplayer the debate with. Um, you'll see it being very commonly run, especially in rounds where the negative has uh, multiple conditional advocacies. For instance, if they have like three off condo, like three conditional counter plans, it would be strategic for the AF at that point and probably more persuasive too to run conditionality then. And it's very applicable in many rounds because in a lot of rounds, you'll be debating uh, critiques and counter plans um, when you're on the AF where uh, it'll most likely be conditional most of the times. It also forces the 2 and R to spend time on it and creates a time trade off. Um, most of the time, the negative is forced to strike a balance in the 2 and R between not spending too little time, but also trying not to spend too much time on the condo flow. And you're basically forcing the 2 and R to respond to it, and you're forcing them to spend probably more time um, answering condo than the amount of time that you spend in the 1 ER or the 2 AC making condo, the condo argument. Um, it's also um, creating 2 ER and possible outs. Um, usually, 2 ER on condo is sometimes. Um, uh, frowned upon, but it's still like creating um, different outs as just adding other arguments does intrinsically, which is always um, really a good thing. There's no reason why you should, like you shouldn't read condo. So the common standards uh, to conditionality, uh, there are, are a lot that people read. So first is Strasky, also known as sort of just skewing that strategy. Um, in this case, being able to kick out of uh, different advocacies in the 2 and R would skew the affirmative strategy because they've placed um, they've placed like uh, obligations on these advocacies. Like in the 1ER, they've read offense against them. They've answered these advocacies, advocacies and by erasing them from the flow, you're massively skewing the um, affirmative strategy in a bad way by um, being able to shift out of these different worlds and hurt the affirmative's ability to uh, have a or have heard the affirmative strategy within the round and their vision of the round by being able to just arbitrarily kick out of uh, different advocacies. Um, argument, argument responsibility is also another very common standard. Um, so this is about how the negative is no longer responsible for their arguments and incentivizes them to um, be like develop their arguments to a, a much smaller degree. It allows them to get away with the more poor arguments being made or not as like true arguments being made um, because of the fact that they can just kick out of them in the 2 and R or just later on the debate. Uh, and uh, for these reasons, it encourages poor argumentation, um, poor responsibility with this argumentation, which all lead to bad models of debate. Um, the third common standard listed here is clash. This is pretty self-explanatory. By kicking out of an advocacy, you're erasing all potential to have clash on it in future speeches. Uh, you're erasing the ability for 
just a discussion to happen over um, contesting a different advocacy because the affirmative is no longer able to contest an advocacy once it goes, uh, once it gets kicked out of, or yeah. And that's obviously bad for engagement within the round. Um, the fourth uh, standard here is time skew. So basically the negative uh, being able to just like really quickly kick out of different advocacies um, in the 2 r or I don't know, a different speech if you're doing policy. So like in the block, for instance, um, this is bad for the affirmative in terms of time because the AF has spent time in the 1ER or the 2AC putting offense on um, the counter plan or the critique and the 2NR or whatever just um, kicks out of it, erases all the time basically that they spent making a lot of these arguments on these different positions, which creates a poor time trade-off for the affirmative, which is bad. Um, Another common standard is ground. So basically, um, you are erasing affirmative ground from the uh, from the debate by kicking out of um, a part of the debate where they will have offense on. So, for instance, if they put if they're putting if the app is putting offense on a counter plan or a critique, you are um, actively like uh, erasing that ground that they have by kicking out of the counter plan or critique. You're also um, restricting the scope of the debate, which also uh, probably influences uh, ground and that fairness question. And the last standard here I have is dispose solves. So the argument here is that instead of reading your advocacies as conditional, you can read them instead as dispositional. Um, this is supposed to strike uh, in equilibrium between AF and NEG fairness, i.e. you're still able to kick out of your advocacies, but it gives the affirmative a um, way to... Um, it's more predictable in terms of which advocacies you're kicking out of because there's a condition tied to being able to kick out of them. If the, the AF knows um, how or when you'll kick out of a certain advocacy because it's based on that condition they set through dispositionality, which makes it more fair. And um, it's argued as like um, basically solving all the benefits of conditionality, but resolving the harms of um, conditionality towards the F. So responding to conditionality. Um, in the 2 r or whatever speech you're responding to Kondo, use a reasonable amount of time, as I've said before, do not over or under allocate. You don't want to like just have one line on Kondo if it's, they have like an actual like developed Kondo shell on the 2 r You don't want to just have one line on Kondo um, that barely answers it. You want to spend some time on it, but you obviously do not want to spend too much time. You don't want to like waste like three minutes of the 2 r answering Kondo. That's just a poor decision. Just strike that balance in the round. This depends on round to round, but usually you want to be decently quick with it in the 2NR. So common objections to this, um, permutations solve. So for instance, the AF is able to make like permutations to essentially any counter plan, really. Like the AF can always just be like permutative counter plan, permutative both, etc. Um, permutations are always viable. Um, they're really quick to make. They can take out advocacies if they go conceded. Um, they also create their own independent worlds of the, uh, of, they also create their own worlds of where both the AF and NEG are implemented, um, which arguably orsons like the abuse. You can make that argument. Um, so yeah, and then critical thinking is also another ob objection where it forces the AF to spend, to be as efficient, as efficient as possible in the 1ER, which forces them to like use critical thinking and managing their time. Uh, hard debate is good debate, this kind of argument, um, this kind of reasoning, etc. Um, next is real world. So this argument is just basically how in the real world, people are able to, like policymakers, for instance, are able to just stop supporting their policy if they wish to do so. And um, like re advocate for another one, they aren't bound. They are like in the real world, people aren't bound to like their sort of arguments or positions that they defend. Um, which means that having a model debate where we are able to kick out of arguments uh, or advocacy specifically is the most uh, preparatory for like real world application. Um, the next objection is reciprocity. So um, this argument is basically the AF is basically condo as well. For instance, you can just kick case, go for like one ER theory or something. You can also kick advantages if you want to. Um, the NEG will say like, um, yeah, basically the AF is able to do the same thing uh, that negative conditionality 
grants the negative, and that levies the disparity or the fairness skew uh, for that. And the last thing I have here is negation theory. Basically, the negative's purpose is to uh, negate the resolution. How they do that does not matter. It's the only burden that they are uh, that they have as the negative. Um, how they go along testing the app, uh, disproving the app doesn't matter. So they can read as many condoms as they want because at the end of the day, the, their burden is to disprove the app. So, yeah, and that is basically all in this lecture. This is a very like brief, in, like brief uh, introductory uh, lecture for what is conditionality, the very basics of it. Uh, there may be videos in the future where we go more in depth into this question, uh, go in depth to better standards that you can make, better responses that you can make, um, more developed debates that can occur with conditionality. Uh, be sure to check out in the description of this video, there will be a, uh, a folder with an example conditionality shell that you can take a look at. So yeah, thanks for watching.